Crazy times. Uh, it's always interesting in crazy times to talk to smart people who have been through it before. And we'll be through it again. The billionaire investor Wilbur Ross certainly fits the bill. He comes on with Neil a lot. He's with me here today. Thank you, sir, for coming in. Good, it's good to, to see you. And it's, um, you know, a couple of we were talking to this guy last hour about how people invest differently depending on where they are in life. Like young people should invest differently than older people, this and that. You came on last night. I was on with Melissa Francis. You called in and spoke right. to Melissa. And I found what you said very interesting because you said, People should grab, you know, their favorite companies, almost like a shopping list. Right. You didn't say which companies, which is fine. But you, is that, that's such your mindset. When things go crazy, you start to make a list? Or what, how does it work? What's the process for you? Well, yeah, we're big at making lists of things um, because it keeps you sane and it keeps you disciplined when there's a lot of noise in the outside environment. What's the example? What's a list? Uh, and maybe this is a silly question, but what would the list look like? I mean, you used to have the new well, you I think write it, it down and say, if on... something happens, I'm ready to do this, that kind of thing? No, not, not so much that. But as things are happening, for example, marine transport is actually a big beneficiary of low oil prices and in general of even a moderate economy. So those stocks have been hit partly because they're deemed to be somehow polluted with oil. Well, in reality, oil is their largest expense, so lower oil price is obviously helpful, and lower oil price also tends to stimulate demand. So it seems silly that stocks like that would get knocked down. It's harder for people who aren't as, I mean, this at least what I think, well, aren't as experienced to kind of keep their wits about them at a time like this, when everything is going down one day. I know today we're bouncing back a little bit, but when it's so volatile, they say, eh, you know, I know I should do this, but it's hard for me to pull well, the trigger. Well, that's true, but remember, what, what do markets do? How do they work? They take numbers and they translate them into emotions, and they take emotions and translate them into numbers. True. And if you think about it that way, it's kind of a closed loop. What do you think is really happening now? I mean, in, I know China's uh, what everybody's talking about, but what are we going through? Are we going through something that's going to end in a recession for a lot of countries? Are we going through a simple correction? What's really happening right now in your view? Well, I think there are two different things that are happening. One is the market and the other is the economy. And while over longer periods those two converge, for short times they don't. The economy hasn't gotten 10 percent worse in the last few days. Right. Just hasn't. It won't. It can't. It doesn't move that quickly. So markets tend to be more volatile than economy. And that's especially true nowadays with the high frequency trading and the fact that the SEC did away with the plus tick requirement for short selling. Right. Now, so we get a correction like this as opposed to over time. Right. And what happens is with the high frequency trading, they all say they have their own proprietary algorithms. I think they're all their algorithms are very similar to each other. So they all tend to go at once. And if you have that happening, less capital deployed into the markets, less permanent capital, because you really don't have a specialist system anymore. <clears throat> and the big investment banks have all pulled back on their trading desks. So all that's happened is that market risk that the regulators were worried about being shouldered by the big investment banks right. are now being shouldered by private investors. Okay. Um, obviously, time frame and saying, well, you know, today we're going to bounce back. It's just uh, nobody can really know that at the exact time. But how will we know when we've kind of turned a little bit? Do you ever get a sense? And on because uh, everybody said yesterday, oh yeah, all right, we put it in a bottom for the short term. And how do you know when those things happen? Or, well, you don't know. You yeah. just have a feel. And I've long ago given up trying to guess the exact bottom or the exact top. I mean, it's too strict to think that you're going to be exactly precise. But right. if things get toward the one end or the other, then you should act. All right. I'm told I have to go. I was going to get into it. You're off the hook. I was going to ask you about a bunch of political questions. You probably. Oh, good. I feel relieved. That. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, real quick, though, is the Republican bigwigs dismissing Donald Trump still? I know that people are right in that. Well, dismissing. Donald Trump is good for the party in that he has brought a whole raft of people who were disengaged back into being interested. Right. I think it was fascinating. Not only was there an enormous audience 
for the big debate, the so-called varsity debate on Fox. Yeah, but the there other was huge yeah. interest in the JV debate. Um, yeah, it's not the same ratings, but there was huge interest compared to what you would expect to see. Absolutely, yeah. Well, the, the JV debate alone was bigger than most presidential debates. <laughs> sure. Right. No, it was. The overall numbers for that more than you would see for a big time debate. Yeah. So that tells I you. think that's good. But the reason I you know, the reason, the reason I asked you the New York Post writing these articles, everybody's out at your house and they're all dismissing Donald Trump. Yeah, like, that, that article by Fred Dicker was not exactly accurate. Wasn't true? No, there was exactly. Well, first of all, Fred Dicker wasn't there. He's so, the writer, by the way. So oh, oh, He's the writer at the Post. But go yeah. ahead. He, he wasn't there. So whoever fed him the story was clearly an anti-Trump person. Right. There was exactly one question about Trump that was addressed to Renz Priebus, the chairman of the Republican National Committee, and he said what I just said. Trump's phenomenon is a good thing for the Republican Party. He's addressed some issues, maybe not the way everybody would like, but he's raised some issues that are resonating with the American public, and he's drawing people back into the political process. That's good. Both and, things are good. Interesting. Now you've addressed them. So um, so I apologize for lying. I told you I'd let you off the hook on politics, and then I asked like three questions about politics. <laughs> I know. Politics. It was a trap, tra oh, a a typical, trap let off. Typical television. It's just the worst trick. Thank you, sir. It's good to see you. The good investing see stuff's you. very important. So is that, by the way. Wilbur Ross.